Hello, I'm Lars Svensson from the Cleveland Clinic and I thought I'd just show you a series of videos from the same patient of a Inspiris Residia valve uh, that I inserted. In the first week I put in about nine of these and um, so I'll give you some first impressions of this valve. So this is a patient that unfortunately we couldn't repair the aortic valve. We do a lot of aortic valve repairs. In fact, we just reported the biggest series in the world and the results have been excellent. So in this patient, we excised the leaflets, sized with the Inspiris sizer for the valves, a size 25. And then I'll show you the steps we use to put in the valve. So I like to put the plagets on top of the annulus. Um, I believe that that results in better hemodynamic performance of valves, and it certainly results in less leakage around the valve, perivalvular leak. So that's the main reason for putting the plagets on top of the um, annulus. So that first uh, suture was at what we call the right-left commissure, and this is at the non-coronary and left commissure and finally the sutures there are being put into the left annulus. So this is the valve. The sewing ring is a bit different from the older Edwards valve, slightly higher and not as big. Um, the other older valve is easier to put in and there you see the leaflets that are dry and uh, stored uh, dry. The valve is then slipped into position and uh, the holder, the stent uh, holder, is then released and the valve is then seated within the annulus. Once it's seated, we tie it into position and there you see uh, the annular uh, pledgets on top of the annulus and the valve being tied into uh, position. The valve takes a bit longer to put in because of the uh, annulus of the new valve not being quite as big um, as the older one. So we go around and tie down all those sutures, making sure that the valve is snug, that there are no gaps, and the pledges are pulled down uh, around the native annulus and that there are no gaps. Once uh, that is completed, the sutures are all cut, and then we check the valve to make sure that the coronary ostia are not obstructed by the new valve. This is a very important step that is often not done during valve replacements and can result in obstruction of the coronary arteries with a heart attack uh, as a result. The aorta is then repaired and uh, in this uh, patient, the patient's a young patient in his 40s and um, he wanted a biological valve so I fully expect that in him the Inspiris valve uh, is one of the better choices as far as long-term durability. Once that's done, we close the aorta. Here I'm taking out the temperature probe. I use that routinely on all my patients to make sure that we've cooled the heart enough and to not cause any damage to the heart. And there we're just shaking out the carbon dioxide that we flood the fuel with to reduce the risk of stroke. So the heart is fibrillating here and we'll give it a shock to get it back into normal rhythm. And they have people sometimes worry about that. And the heart uh, virtually always gets back into a normal rhythm uh, once we shock it. And then check that there's no bleeding. And uh, once that is done, we close up. A reasonably easy valve to put in with good results. Over the last six years, we've done over 3,000 isolated aortic valve replacements like this, most of them through the keyhole incision, which was used in this patient's so minimum base of keyhole operation. And our risk of death, including reoperations and uh, patients with endocarditis and so on, has been 0.6% risk of death. So 
just over 1 in 200 risk of death. So there you have a uh, just series of images of the new Inspiris valve, what it looks like.